In this video, we're going to talk about App Armor. It would be good to take a look at App Armor profiles and uh, the Cyber Patriot competition. Also, you may want to consider looking at um, SE Linux, but this is going to provide a level of access control for applications that are running on the system. And just being able to parse and interpret these files, looking at them and understanding kind of what's in them could very well be helpful. So you're going to need an AWS machine or a Linux box. Really, if you've got Ubuntu spun up, you're good to go. And if I cat Etsy issue here, you can see that I'm running Ubuntu 20.04. This should work on any version, though. So pause the video. This is the same machine. And you're going to need two sessions into it. All right, so I'm going to start with an install here. It's just recommended if you Google um, App Armor install. This is apt install App Armor Easy Prof, uh, App Armor Utils, Cert Spotter. I don't know that we need all of this. I'm going to do my apt update. But uh, especially, I don't know if Cert Spotter is really necessary for this. But we're going to go ahead and do it. I'm um, going to hit enter. Um, it's 916 megabytes to pull all that in. So I'm going to pause the video while we get all that installed. And so after installing that, um, just take a look in Etsy app armor D. And we have a series of profiles here. Uh, the DH client is profiled. Uh, the man utility has a default profile. Um, we have profiles that are disabled. We can run AA hyphen status at this point. It's going to give us a status of uh, profiles that are in enforce mode. We can see that man is in enforce mode, which means if we try to do something outside of what we're specifying in that file, it's going to deny us. We can have profiles uh, that are in complain mode, which means if we do something outside of what they are specified, to do it'll simply complain and we can see we have a process that's currently being applied uh, in complain mode here as well and so we can uh, enable and disable profiles you see we've got a folder here called disable that right now just has this syslog um, sim link in it I'll do an lsalh and you can see that we're actually sim linked here to Etsy app armor user bin our syslog D, but it's in the disable folder here, so I would assume that it's uh, disabled by default. So let's create a program and apply uh, some app armor controls so we can kind of look at how these work. So I'm going to pico, let's call, let's call it myscript.sh. And it's important we put the bin bash at the top here. We're going to invoke a shell interpreter at the very top here. And let's do a couple of things in our script. Let's go ahead and echo one into a file called mydata.data. And let's run the touch command, which simply updates the timestamp on a file. We'll touch mydata.data. And then we'll um, rm my data dot data. So this script essentially puts the number one into a file. We update the timestamp and then we delete that file. So effectively, when we run this, we're not going to see anything happen. I'm going to save that with Control O, then Control X to exit. I'm going to chmod uh, seven 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 my script dot script uh, sh just to give it execute commissions permissions and we can go ahead and run this script just as a demo and you'll see that nothing happens it went through it created my data dot data deleted the file so essentially we don't see anything when we run it okay so over here we're gonna do a a hyphen gen prof which is gen profile and we're going to run it against my script.sh. And now this has to be in the other window. This is going to generate an app armor profile. And you can see it couldn't find it because we're in a different directory over here. So uh, home 
Ubuntu MyScript.sh because that's where I am in the other window where I created the script. And it's going to put it into the profile generation. Now we're going to run the script over here. And we're going to say, okay, let's scan the system logs. So this is going to be S on the left. Now it's going to ask us questions about what just happened when we profiled that script. And it's going to say, all right, are these things that you want it to do? Because if it breaks outside of these basic permissions in the future, we're either going to complain or we're going to enforce or whatever you want to do, right? And so the first one reads, uh, we are executing user bin touch. Now when you execute this, full, this file, do you want whoever's executing my script.sh, do you want it to be able to execute the touch command and inherit the user permissions of the person who's running the file? Because when you execute a file on Linux and on Windows, that file essentially inherits the permissions of the user that's running the file. So I'm saying, do you want touch to inherit user permissions when this script runs the file? Yes. So I'm going to hit I for inherit. Saying the same thing here. We have the RM command. So when you run RM, do you want that executable to inherit user permissions anytime this uh, is run? So yes, I'm going to hit I for inherit. And this DAC override is one that I kind of looked up and I don't really have a solid <laughs> grasp of. I mean, it's uh, discretionary access control is what DAC stands for. And uh, I'm not sure why we're we need to override discretionary access control in this simple case. But I've seen that it's something that is added in a lot of cases. So I'm going to choose allow here. And if anyone can come up with a better explanation of why we're allowing that and why that one pops up, I'd be interested. And in this case, we're um, utilizing, the first line was uh, slash bin bash. We're utilizing a TTY. And uh, so do we want to allow access to this particular um, functionality, the TTY? And we're going to allow that as well. So I'm going to hit A. And it's asking us, OK, do you want to uh, provide access, write access to a file called mydata.data in home Ubuntu? And yes, we want this file to have write access there. So I'm going to allow that. After going through those prompts based on our script, we're going to hit S to save. And then F to finish. All right, so now let's run my script. And we get the same result, right? Nothing happened because it's working within what we uh, assigned it. So I'm going to go ahead and if we do an ls now in apparmor.d, we're going to see we have a profile for home Ubuntu myscript.sh. So let's pico home Ubuntu myscript.sh. This is what it looks like. Essentially, these are the things that uh, we've created here. And we've said, OK, um, I didn't consider this one too much before the video. I'm assuming that it's allowed to read itself because this is a file. And this file, it has read access to, right? even though we've already executed the file. So can read itself. Uh, we are allowed to inherit user permissions and execute bash. We're allowed to inherit user permissions. Um, memory map here means we can load this executable. This M means we can create a memory map. We can load this executable into memory, execute it, uh, inherit the permissions of the user execute and we can read the file for touch we can read we can execute we can create a memory map so we can do these things and we can write to my data dot data so let's change the permissions here and let's say okay my data dot data let's change that w to an r and let's say we have read permission to my data dot data but not write. And i'm gonna hit control o to save and then x to exit All right. So if I run my script.script .script now, still no result because we haven't updated AppArmor. So we're going to need to run AppArmor parser hyphen R. And it's home.ubuntu.myscript.sh. 
.sh. We're going to say, okay, parse that. Oh, file not found. Probably have to point it at the app, app armor directory. So Etsy uh, app armor.d, give it an actual file location. Now if I run my script.sh, you can see that we can't touch the file, we can't write to the file. Um, we've essentially given it uh, permissions there that don't allow it to write. So that file was never created. We've restricted it. I could go into uh, myscript.sh and I could do something like touch test.txt. Let's see what happens when we do this. So we're going to create a new file. And you see it cannot create test.txt because it's being enforced inside of AppArmor. AppArmor didn't explicitly give it permission to write to that file. So creating an AppArmor profile with uh, AA genprof on certain applications and sort of allowing and inheriting all of the things when you know the profile is in a good state, it's going to provide a level of security in case that application is ever compromised and tries to do things outside of the scope that it's intended to do. Now by default we're in complaint and enforce mode so I could do AA complain home Ubuntu my script.sh and that would put it into complain mode instead of in, in, enforce so if I run it you know it uh, went through in this case the last thing it did was create test.txt which allowed it to do that and we can see that inside a syslog so I can cat var log syslog um, and uh, just inside of our syslog we can see down here that there was a requested mask and a denied mask so we can see down here that um, there was a complaint logged inside a syslog so we have a heads up in terms of what's happening and we can also see it with uh, journal CTL as well and as we scroll down to the bottom of journal CTL uh, we can see that it's also complaining here as well about some of that uh, action that we just took that was outside of the scope inside of uh, complain mode so that's app armor uh, hopefully this will be useful information you want to kind of scroll through those profiles and if you see it you know an application that has allowed access uh, it's something that it shouldn't should be easy enough to modify it and uh, sort of adjust those configuration files